Welcome to the Dave Palma Show, the podcast that revives, restores, and awakens your innermost capabilities. You have the training and the talent to succeed, but do you have the guts to fail? I love what I do. When you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. Find your path to success through the journey of those who have succeeded. And now, your host, Dave Palma. Hi, welcome, welcome back to the Dave Palmer Show. With me in this episode, I have the creator of the Adaptability Mindset Program, Robert Overweg. Welcome to the Dave Palmer Show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure having you here. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, adapting to various things. It's probably a, a big thing that people need to do now with, with what's going on in the world now. And obviously, hopefully coming out of all this situation, but obviously adapting to the new, you know, uh, normal, as they call it. So it's quite interesting. You've got this adaptability program timingly as well. So, yeah, I'd like to hear more about it, really. So um, why do we need adaptability? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, people can uh, like ask that question themselves, you know, why would you need adaptability? You know, how are you faring in your life? You know, are you ever stuck in a, in a situation? Do you ever need to um, find like a fresh perspective? Are you ever stressed out or do you just flow through life? And are you just happy and you never encounter any stress? Or maybe you feel a bit stuck. Maybe you feel a bit narrow minded. Maybe you feel a bit boxed in. And that's sort of what we saw, like the latter is what we saw in a lot of companies. Like we work with a lot of large organizations and we saw that almost everyone felt like they were doing meaningless work. Like the, if you look at the global engagement with work, it's only 20%. So 80% of the people are not engaged. And if you look at the United States, only 17, 17% of people get meaning out of their work. So yeah, if you want some change, if you want to develop this fresh perspective, then working on your, your adaptability, on your cognitive flexibility, that would be a good idea. And then at the same time, we have like the tug of the world, you know, through social media, news, all of these things, they can sort of railroad your thinking. It can, can distract you so much from, from finding new perspectives. And you know, you could even make the case that due to all that technology, you could ask the question, are we even thinking for ourselves? You know, do we even still have the, the ability to, to come up with these fresh perspectives? Or are we more lived in a sense, you know? Um, so yeah, there, there are so many of these things happening which don't really help us in, in, in an open, adaptable and flexible mindset. Yeah, wow. Okay, uh, that's... Uh, that's quite interesting that so so how, how, how do you develop adaptability well you can do several things um it would be wise to uh, so you, you can start in uh, there, there are like two important things that you can start with so you could start by connecting more to what you find meaningful you know what expands your imagination because if yeah if you look at for example your 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 frame of mind you know it is how you how you perceive the world how you look at at the world and, then, and it is developed by your, your education, your upbringing, your work, you know, all of these things, they form how you look at the world. Then wouldn't it then also be a good idea to try to expand that frame of mind, you know, to work more on your imagination, to create like a larger lattice work of ideas. And that you can do through, you know, the things that have always pushed humanity forward. That is art, that is philosophy, that is poetry, that is, it can also be movies, like whatever arouses your interest. Uh, connect more with that and if we look at uh, like high performance when it high performers when it comes to uh, adaptability and flexible perspectives like Elon Musk, Sung Rumin, uh, Dorothy Hodgkins, all these people they are still connected to their intrinsic motivation to what they you know what drives them and yeah, in our perspective a lot of people sort of lost their ability to adapt because they are not connected anymore to what they find meaningful and what what expands their mind. So that is a very important aspect. And then at the same time, would be also wise to work on creating some mental space. You know, when was the last time where you did not have to respond to something? You know, we are always constantly bombarded with push messages, new information, and 
that allows us to to not explore things and and we need more mental space to you know, come up with the with the bigger ideas with the with the different perspectives otherwise we are just you know, lived by yeah, by outside stimuli so these are two important things that you can uh, can already start with so these are uh, mental but you can also just get the body moving you know there are a lot of things in life that can can help you to develop adaptability to develop uh, mental space so it can be yoga it can be forced walks it can be uh, meditation it can all even be kickboxing and i think that is also something that we yeah have lost a little bit because we've been sitting more and more you know so we've been become these sedentary creatures um but yeah movement is very important to create this mental mental space and this adaptability yeah well um in a world that's just constantly distracting i mean obviously as i say with, with all the stuff that's gone on recently but always in the historically obviously people had to adapt you know from from um prehistoric days you could say you know when things evolve you know through evolution but um mm -hmm. you know how, how do we adapt in a world like this yeah good question um so it could start with um for example putting your phone on flight mode like very practical in the evening and when you wake up try to keep it on flight mode as long as possible so that you wake up with your own uh, first conscious thoughts in instead of being sort of lived by outside impulses uh, you can turn all of your notifications on your on your laptop, on your phone, etc. You can turn those off so you can create more mental space. And if your boss says that you need to be available, then you can refer, uh, refer him to the, the, the research by McKinsey, which says that if we can get into flow states, we'll be 500% more efficient. Uh, that's the research that they did for over a decade. Uh, because if you, you know, you can get into flow states when you're not distracted, when you are in line with what you find meaningful. Uh, so uh, these things help and also maybe do less of the things which look at the, um, for example your your streams and look at your your information intake and and just assess properly if the things that you are connected to if they really help you in reaching your goal or reaching your goals and if they're not then maybe you can you know move a bit of these things out of the way and connect more to the things that you do have influence on that can already clear stuff up and when you're completely stressed out then you should probably revert back to getting into movement like uh, go out for running do strength training you do, you know, do these sort of things that have always worked for the last couple of thousand years yeah yeah i mean it sounds very very techy uh <laughs> you know the mobile phone turning it off and stuff like that which obviously we are in that we're in that world now, aren't we, really? But uh, how do we stay ahead in a tech-driven world? Yeah, but uh, to, to get into that, that point that it's a te techy world, like some research says that um, when we use our phones often, that we can have 20% less brain capacity. Uh, when we are under stress, and like uh, the media, social media, all of these things can give us stress as well, then our brain can be 80%, like 80%, um less effective so yeah we, we it's pretty wise to to find ways how to like keep these things um a little bit at bay so we can create more mental space for the things that are valuable for us um but what was your question again because i went into the yeah how, point with. how do we stay ahead in the tech driven world yeah how to stay ahead and uh, that ideally you would do that through um uh, curiosity driven way you know um, what do you want to do? What drives your your imagination? And how can you use that and explore new technology? Let's say, for example, that you are uh, interested in poetry, that you want to write more poetry, or that you want to become like a copywriter. Then, you know, what kind of technology is out there that can support you in in following that dream? For example, there's now GPT-3, which is an um, artificial intelligence which can understand text and it can write text. So you can put one sentence in, in, in the software uh, and you can get like an entire paragraph out of it. And you can say to the, to the software, well, I want to have it written in this style or in that style and it will change that for you. So as long as it aligns with your own curiosity, as long as it aligns with you know, what drives you, I think that, that is always a good idea to start there and just keep pulling on that thread and 
find how it can support you. And keep an open mind as well, because what most people do, for example, with NFTs or with blockchain, they say, oh, it will never work. You know, that is often how our, how our minds work, because we either don't understand it, we can't deal with ambiguity and the uncertainty, or you know, the change engenders some fear in us. And uh, all of those things are not so, uh, yeah, very beneficial. So just embrace it, you know, embrace new technology, play around with it a bit, and then um, have your judgment. So in that order as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned about flow earlier. I mean, I'm big on sort of, you know, meditation, mindfulness um, and stuff like that. But um, how do you create a, a calm mind? How would you, what's your version of creating a calm mind? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think some of the things that I, that I mentioned before, like trying to keep a lot of things at bay, and I think in general, a calm mind is, and keeping the things at bay, but also creating like a structure where you have enough mental space, where you have enough of the maybe yoga, kickboxing, whatever, walking outside, that is, that these things become a structural part of your day. And it also has to do with, for example, how you deal with, uh, with stress and ambiguity. So you can train yourself to be more okay with these things. So you'll have a more calm mind. And you can do that either by exposing yourself to things in a very gradual way, which you know, gives you a little bit of an itchy feeling, you know, that makes you a little bit anxious, makes you a little bit uncertain. But when you go through it, that you celebrate that you went through it. In, in that way, you, you train yourself and you, you create like a new connection between uh, uncertainty, anxiety and your dopamine receptors. So you can rewire your brain to also be a little bit more okay with all of the things that are happening in the world. And then finally, just focus on the things that you can control, you know, focus on the things that are relevant to you, that, that you can influence, for example, the books you read, the people you hang out with, you know, the, the companies you start, all these sort of things um, you have influence on. And most of the outside things, that's normally what people focus on. Yeah, you have a little bit less and that yeah, can create a bit more of an anxious mind. And that's something that you want to avoid, of course. Yeah. Well, let's get back to life a bit. Um, how, how do you connect back to the meaning and, and, and learn from life, back to meaning and learn from life? Yeah. Or if you're already flowing, how do you get to an elite level of thinking? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think one of the most important things to do is you know, connect back to the things that have always inspired you. And maybe you need to go back to your childhood. You know, what were you doing when you were younger? Were you drawing? Were you always in nature? Were you always exploring? And often people stop somewhere like in their life with uh, doing those sort of things or, or trying to achieve a certain goal. For me in the beginning, it was, you know, I wanted to create comics. But no, of course you can't create comics because you can't make any money with that. You know, that's sort of the stories that we tell each other, that we tell ourselves. Um, but if you keep doing these sort of things, you know, the things that, that give you energy it can also be helping people, you know, just helping someone else can also give you a bit more meaning. I think nowadays our society, how we work, it's also so compartmentalized. You know, someone is responsible for this specific thing in the company, customer support or marketing. No one ever talks with each other. No one ever oversees the entire entirety of the company. And it is very weird to bring in, um, you know, the things that, that drive you from your, from your own, own life. So it's almost like these two segregated systems. But if you are able to, yeah, to combine these more, we also see from our research and, and other research as well, that if you are more connected to your intrinsic motivation, you also get a, create, you get a higher uh, innovative and creative output. That's just like scientifically proven. That's how it works. So that is a, a quite a lengthy answer to, you know, connecting more to meaning, but it's also, yeah, one of the most profound questions I think to ask. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite interesting, really. Um, I mean, going back to the information technology, you know, the techie world, <laughs> um, how do we deal with information overload, you know, with the world we live in now and, and be able to keep our sanity in an mm -hmm. always on world? Yeah, I think like a few of the things that we that we went through um, turning off a lot of the, the push messages, yeah. um, 
creating more creating more space being more conscious of what you put in so also filter filter your streams filter your instagram filter your twitter and use these things more yeah, in a sense more sparingly and sometimes i like to make the reference to you know the thing that you did as a kid you know the floor is lava so you can get on it really quickly same with, so with with your social with all of these streams you can dip into it and then immediately jump out so that you that you aren't stuck and especially in the morning what i like to do is to you know not interact with these platforms and with these these mediums because then my mind still has clarity and i can be like the most creative in in those moments and and make that more more of a habit for you yeah okay all right well, well um obviously uh people are now working from home and stuff like that i think i don't know if uh, people would prefer to go to the office back to the office when all this is over hopefully soon it will be you know with all this coronavirus stuff and pandemic but obviously things have changed in the way we work but do you think that 40 hour work weeks are a relic of the past? Yeah, hundred percent. It stems from the era of Henry Ford, you know, uh, and yeah, we see a lot within companies that people don't have time to learn. They don't have time to relax and people just chunk in a lot of meetings and that's what they call life. And then people wonder, uh, you know, why, why engagement is so low, why innovation doesn't work. So. We see that people who have their, um, let's say, side hustles or uh, work shorter, shorter time, that they are way more creative. And now you see companies who are also experimenting with four day work weeks, where you see that product productivity is up, um, mental health is up, people are happier, they've got more time for each other, and they're more creative. So I think definitely there will, there, there will be a change. And you see that as well in these uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, you know, the organizations which run on Web3. People work in like multiple companies at the same time and they decide when they work and they decide, you know, um, how they do business. And you see, for example, the company like I think 34 percent of the websites run on WordPress. The company who builds that, you, know, you can just uh, if you work at that company, you can just work whenever you want. You, know, you can also pick pick your own task and fill in in a sense your own life and i think yeah if we want to have any any form of future in organizations then that would probably be more of um of the way to go yeah yeah okay all right well um finally uh perhaps we can go over you could tell us uh, before we go you go uh, uh, before you go <laughs> what the adaptive uh mindset program is all about Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've been working on uh, the Adaptable Mindset program for the last couple of three years. And we started together with the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. And then, uh, yeah, we onboarded more companies like um, um, from Chanel to Vueling. And we did all of these experiments with them. And we developed our own online program as well. And through this program, you in a sense get like a cognitive reset. And we give you all of the tools which are available to create mental space, to connect again to meaning and um, yeah, to open up the mind. And we've been running this, like I said, for the last three years. So we got a lot of data back what works and we kept on iterating, iterating, iterating. And now we have um, yeah, a beautiful product, which in a sense pulls out all the stops to create this adaptability, to give people the, the empowerment to find these, uh, these fresh perspectives again. Yeah, well, okay, well, um, and before we go, uh, how, how can people find out more about uh, the adaptable mi mindset uh, and get involved? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course, you're more than welcome to uh, go to adaptablemindset.com. Um, there you can find uh, the personal journey and also the, uh, the learnings for, for how to set up an organization, which is uh, conducive to change and, um, and innovation. And there are a few uh, articles that you can read as well, which are um, uh, yeah, very applicable and free. And there's a masterclass as well, which you can do, which is also free um, to find mental space, you know, to filter the noise, to give you the tools in a, in a very concise, in a very brief, and in a very applicable and useful way. 
Excellent. Well, Robert, it's really intriguing uh, hearing about this. Uh, you know, there's various different programs I've heard about. This is very new to me. So <laughs> I just really need, needed to give, give more of a probing approach to, to, to get out what this is all about. And that now I've learned a lot more. So, yeah, no, it's very interesting. And, and thanks a lot for, for uh, coming on the show and, and sharing this with my audience today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. It was wonderful. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Or head over to my website, davepalmer.com, and click on Rate Show. Well, that's all for now, but I'll see you in the next episode of The Dave Palmer Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.